Welcome back at WNST, Towson, of Baltimore and Baltimore Positive. We are uh, positively in the 21228 where life is great. It's all brought to you by the Maryland Lottery. We're letting ourselves play here. I got my, uh, my mask. I've got my scratch-offs. We're going to be at Costas next week. But right now, we're at the Beaumont. We're going to be uh, getting some chops here. Don Moeller celebrating 30 years of radio all week long, all month long, getting up on the holidays and... Uh, I, I need a little lamb chop or something here. You know, <laughs> he's the menu, out man. the menu. He's That's not right. sure what he's ordering. He's That's get right. Yep. I'm, I'm in for the crab. Don, this is one of man, your – Man, I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interrupting you. I, listen, the new old-fashioned, buddy. Mm. Listen to this. Buffalo Trace bourbon, amaretto de Serona, simple syrup, and some Angostura bitters. I don't mind if I do. Absolutely, absolutely. A new old fashioned. I didn't know you drank like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I just learned that he liked lacrosse recently. Uh, Thirty-eight years. Yeah, yeah. 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 Don Bowler is here. Don, this is one of your favorites. This is. This, oh. We're going to talk about Catonsville and go local. I said to you, uh, I want to do a show in Catonsville. You're like, it's time. And every time we come to Catonsville, we try to get. The, last time we were across the street. That's right. That's and right. We were just getting going over at State yeah. Fair. Tom Cork, dude, always good to see you, man. Good to see you. A good pleasure. To see you. A pleasure here to talk yeah. money today. Right? Well, I want to talk money. I mean, We'll, we'll get time to talk a little bit about the county and what's going on and his legacy as he's heading, he's hanging up the public service shoes and heading back full time to the private sector. Right? That's right. Trying to balance both has to be a bear. Do you remember difficult. life before all this? Yeah, or no? It's very difficult to do doing two full time jobs. It's very difficult. And sure. it is, and it is a full time job now, yeah. right? But listen, listen to this, Nestor. This is pretty remarkable stuff. I mean, we're sitting with someone who's listed by Forbes as the best in state wealth advisors. He's 167 out of almost 20,000 financial advisors. He's, in t <laughs> this part would make me a nervous wreck. You got to talk about this, Tom. He's directly invested almost $400 million that he's directly responsible for in 29 states. You've been in business 28 years. I mean, Tom, investing almost $400 million, I'd probably, there wouldn't be enough Maylocks or rollades in the world for me to be in charge of four hundred million dollars yeah, for yeah. people. Talk it's a, about that. It's uh, humbling. <laughs> it's humbling, Don. And um, I, I'd say since the pandemic hit, uh, we've been really climbing the wall of worry. Uh, literally since the pandemic back in March of 2020, April 2020, and things basically just collapsed. Understandably, it's been pretty tough, and it's almost uh, PTSD at this moment. Because everybody remembers going through this pandemic. Nobody saw it coming. And so now every time the market falls back, a lot of people are like, oh, wait a minute. Is this the next one? So Omicron, when that hit during Thanksgiving, clients started to get a little nervous, understandably. But on top of COVID. It's faster to get nervous now. Oh, yeah. Well, well oh, yeah. Tom, I'm going to jump in on that. And, and again, apologize for interrupting. But because you just touched on something. I asked a good friend last night. And he, I, wanna, I want you to confirm or uh, refute what he said. I said, here's what I don't get. I said, I don't get how markets can react globally to an article or two on the Omicron variant that may or may not be true mm -hmm. and plummet and then react in the other direction, the next day or two, when, oh, yeah. we, when, a, when one doctor might say, you know, I don't think it's going to be so bad. Yep. And I'm saying, this is billions of dollars. Yep. Tom, how can them? And what he said was, there actually, is this true? There are algorithms oh, sure. that actually look for articles that will trigger. Oh, yeah. I mean, walk us through that. That, uh, that was new to me. Now, there's definitely well, it's all confidence, <laughs> right? Oh uh, Yeah, confidence. But there are high-frequency trading that happens in a lot of computer-driven models and and um, augs that really, really exacerbate the moves. Um, and it's, it makes it more challenging because 20 years ago, the markets would rotate in two or three months. Um, now they rotate sometimes in two or three minutes, not yeah. hours, but minutes. And so the uh, rapid change, that's why you can't time the markets. People that are like, I'm going to get out of the market now and I wait till things improve. Well, if you wait till things improve, are stock prices the same as what right. they were when they were down? No. Stock prices reflect reality as it happens. And so often, time in the market is a fool's game. Most people do it very poorly. It's better to have a plan, better to be long-term. 
better what does that mean? Plan. When you say long term in a plan, what? what uh, here you go. You're yeah. going to say, "I'm going to have Tom counsel you right now." You're coming to him. You've got all this wealth, and you're looking to invest as you go to the next 20 years of your life. Yeah. Wait, talk now. If I had all this wealth, I wouldn't need Tom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you well, would. We, we need actually, Tom. Have, actually, the more people have wealth, right. the more they come to people like us. Right. And, right. and um, well, who are they going to before? And maybe they. Uh, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> I, you know what? It's it is it is tough. I mean, having a plan means really. Um, first of all, before you invest, you really want to sit down and run real financial planning. Look at assets, liabilities, cash flow, insurance. You want to ask yourself, well, what rate of return do I need to make to make my plan work over time? Once you've determined what targeted rate of return you need to make, then you develop an asset allocation that's going to give you the highest probability of hitting that target rate return over time. And then once you have your allocation in place, then you want to monitor, you want to make changes where you need to make changes. Um, but I think having really good investments that you know that if there's a big storm that you're going to get through this, that's, that's the important thing. Think about it when you're on an airplane. If you hit turbulence, do you jump out of the plane? No. What do you do? You put your seatbelt on, you ride th through that turbulence, knowing that eventually you're going to get to where you want to go. Same thing can be said with investing, that if you're invested and you're like reinvesting dividends, markets go down. You buy more and more shares as prices go lower, right? And so when markets finally recover, are you back up to even? No. You're now farther ahead because you've been reinvesting and buying low instead of doing what most investors do. Most investors, when prices go down, they look at their statement, they're down 50, 100,000. Time to get out. Yeah. And they sell because of emotion. Investors should be doing the opposite of what they usually feel like they should be doing. When they feel like they should be panicking and selling, if they feel that way, well, guess, guess what? Most investors feel the same. And so prices are low. Uh, when investors feel really confident, well, that's when you want to start being careful. So when I hear investors nervous and kind of uncertain, that actually makes me more confident because I know that prices are generally lower. But if every client's happy and every client's optimistic, that's what I personally, as a professional investor, get nervous. You you're, you really, and the folks in your field, Tom, really are mini psychologists, are you not? We just try to keep people on plan. And it sounds easy to do, but it's anything but easy because people's money, that's their security. Sure. That's, that's really their foundation of really what makes them feel okay. And when they all of a sudden get their statement, maybe a million dollars is now 850000 that's kind of emotional. And so you, what I do often is I just keep people's emotional brains and I take their emotion out of it and shift them into their rational brain. So how do I do that? I just talk about economics. I talk about earnings. I talk about fundamentals. Um, I talk about data. And that often shifts clients enough where they can wait out the storm. But all that is pred predicated that they have good asset allocation, they have good investments. Now, if they're in fly-by-night stocks, they should bail. They should get out because fly-by-night stocks can go to zero. But if they own really good quality companies over time, you know, like, for example, Amazon. It doesn't matter who's in the White House. It doesn't matter if there's a pandemic. Are Apple or Amazon going to continue to do business? Sure. Yeah, Disney, they're gonna, they're Disney, Disney, right? They're Same all going to. Right. Um, Warren Buffett said it best. Warren B Buffett said, if you think about buying stocks, like thinking about owning a McDonald's franchise, say you own a McDonald's franchise, you're selling hamburgers and Cokes and other things. If something happens in China, are you going to just close your doors and stop doing business? No. You're going to do it. Maybe you'll sell a little less hamburgers, but you'll still be okay. So if you think about owning stocks as owning companies instead of prices that go up and down, you'll be a much better investor. So often what I do is uh, really try to encourage investors to really keep a long-term focus and make sure they have good quality and then make adjustments where needed. I mean, if somebody gets too concentrated in an in investment or if somebody has a, a position that's just not working out, you know, we'll buy and we'll sell where we need, but we're definitely not trying to time the market. Well, look, talking about taking a long-term view, talking about adjusting where needing, needed, uh, we're coming to the end of, of 2021. Uh, you, you read more than anyone I know. You send me an article a day, uh, something on, 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 on the markets or the economy or the global economy. 
what are you what are you telling folks as you look to 2022 in terms of what we should expect I'm cautiously optimistic. I mean, it's really, really easy to be pessimistic. Matter of fact, often when you're pessimistic, you sound smarter than optimistic. Just, just how the markets work. It really does. Um, but I'm cautiously optimistic only because the economy is doing exceptionally well right now. It's doing exceptionally well. Earnings are coming in much stronger than anticipated. Um, for example, you go back a year ago, and if you look at S&P 500 earnings, the estimate was around 160 range for all 500 companies as far as the average um, earnings out there, about $160. Instead, it's coming in at $200, a lot higher than what people expected. Now, looking forward, earnings estimates are around 200 maybe 235 um, 220 235 in the next 12 months. And so a lot of investing is about math. So if you, if you know what the earnings will be in 12 months, you can calculate what the market should be in 12 months um, just by putting a price earnings ratio versus the earnings projected. And that's how so people the stuff project you learned The stuff you learned in college. McDaniel College. At McDaniel College. <laughs> those algorithms still work. Um, best class I ever took for this business was called Money and Banking by Ethan Seidel. Uh-huh. And Ethan's that was a good friend. absolutely the best class I took for this business I'm in today. Uh, but yeah, our target price over the next 12, 18 months is a little over 5050 on the S&P. S&P today is about 4687 plus or minus wherever it closed at. Um, so that represents about 9%. If you add in 1.5%, 2% of dividends, you know, probably a double-digit year next year. And it doesn't feel like that. I will tell you, no investor believes it. Everybody's nervous. Politics is unfortunately Inflation tough. Inflation is, is real. I Inflation mean, is and real. And what we're paying for everything yep. is real. Yep, yep. Um, and, and always think about the market as rich people own stock. And you'll say no, regular people own. Every number I see says there's a very small percentage of people who own the country, which right. is if you own part of McDonald's, you own, you know, you, you're invested in that. Mm-hmm. I, I often wonder for the people who aren't in on – in your world of, I went from a million to 850, which is just, I got two grand in the bank and I hope my furnace doesn't go down this winter, right? right? right. Like, there's so many more people in that situation in this country that might never own a stock, right? right? Like, literally, that how one affects the other. How seven out of 10 people driving up and down Frederick Road are feeling inflation right. to some degree. Absolutely. And then there's the one and a half cars that go down that have so much money. They're angry. They're miserable. They got ten million dollars and they're still not happy. But they're not going. They're not going to live under a bridge, right? right? That's right. But the, but the inflation's for all of us. Yes. For everybody that goes to Wise today and buys a gallon of milk or buys a piece of meat or whatever it is, almost everything costs a little more. Oh, and, no, I, and, no I, doubt. And, and certainly, if that's being reflected in McDonald's making even more money, and I'm an investor. That, that creates a gap that's even wider in all of this. In the same way, you talk about education all the time, Don. When you shut down the schools for, for five months and tell kids to learn at home, the ones at the bottom fall further. Mm-hmm. The ones at the top, they got apples, they got Wi-Fi, they go to school, they figure it out. Right. But everybody else is kind of fighting it, right? Yeah. And, and so you are talking about people that are in the market and, and at that level, but the inflation affects the confidence of the rest of oh, us, no, no, of the rest of us, right? No, no, there's no doubt about it. And everybody sees it real life, up close and personal, whether it's going to the grocery store, um, whether it's putting gas in their cars. Um, inflation has been really, really hot this year. We all know that. And there's a lot of reasons for that. The supply chain disruption, for example. Now, we think a lot of the supply chain disruption is going to be fixed over the next three to six months from what we're reading. That will help a lot. But infl- There's a lot of money riding on it. Oh, well, there's, there's people figuring out oh, logistics. Absolutely. And, pro- right? you know, the profit motive is a great way to fix things. You get a yeah. lot of smart people that are going to try to figure this so out. So capitalism still works. Capitalism <laughs> works and works well. That's one of the reasons the markets have done so well, because earnings have come in. And this affects everyday people, whether they're invested or not. Because the fact of the matter is if corporations do well, they hire more people. And with inflation coming back around, now we're starting to see wages finally starting to go up for, for average working people out there, which is important. Uh, but we, our view is inflation, although it's not transitory, uh, we do think inflation will cool off in the next couple of years. So our base case for inflation, where it's running, gosh, 5 6 7%, depending on what day you look at it, we think over the next 12 months, we'll start seeing that about 3.7% over 12, 18 months from now. And then we think of the next couple of years, we think we'll get back down about 2.5%. So well, having said that, Tom, then what should the Fed be doing? 
in the next year, and what will they do? Uh, the Fed Two should, questions. The Fed should taper. So the Fed – Tell folks what that means. <laughs> yeah. That's inside baseball. Uh, uh, Fed basically is buying $150 billion in either mortgages or treasuries right now every single month. Um, so that's artificially keeping interest rates low. And so tapering just simply means the Fed will stop buying all these treasuries and mortgages and maybe have, it, say, a neutral policy as far as are they buying or selling in the markets. And, uh, but, but the economy is um, really strong. So the economy can handle the Fed stopping tapering. So this taper tantrum stuff, that's more fear than fact, in my opinion. And so at the end of the day, I think the Fed needs to get control of inflation, which means eventually start raising rates. Now, are raising rates a bad thing? Everybody's like, oh, they're going to raise rates. It's the end of the world. The fact of the matter is when you look at the Fed raising rates, and historically, for the first 12, 18, 24 months after the Fed starts raising rates, guess what the stock market does? It does pretty well over time because if they're raising rates, it means the economy's back on its footing, means the economy's doing better. So raising rates is not a bad thing. Um, short term, you're going to get these high-frequency people and these day traders and stuff, and they'll have a knee-jerk reaction. But for longer-term investors, the only way long-term investors can win is by being long-term. That's how they beat these short-term day traders. And it works over time. But in the short term, you have to have a lot of tolerance. Because when you look at markets and how much markets fluctuate, on average since 1950, the market's going down 5%. How many times do you think the market goes down 5% mm. a year on average since 1950? The answer three times a year on average since 1950, 5%. So every year, you Every saying. year right. since 1950. So if I said, well, how often does the market go down 10% since 1950 each year? You know what the answer is? About once a year. So when all this volatility happens, every single time it feels like it's unique and different. And every single time right. it feels scary. But if you're kind of looking at statistics, you often just realize that that's just part of investing. It's you know, history. To be expected. History matters. Yep, yeah, history matters. Statistics matter. And so that's what I do with clients every day is I really talk to them about what the markets do, what is normal, what's abnormal, and, and decide what to buy and what to sell, depending on where the market's at. Well, I love your term, cautiously optimistic. We say to folks out there who are, you know, and many of them, it's interesting, more and more um, I talk to young parents. They actually like this idea, Tom, I guess there's this uh, thing where you can buy a, a, a part of a stock. You know, so yeah, they like to, yeah. I guess I can get $100 worth of That's Apple right. and give my granddaughter a hundred hours worth of apples fractional so, shares there. fractional shares yep. there you go well listen shifting real quick before we, we'll get to your holiday memories before we let you out of here but amazing you you're wrapping up you're going to wrap up 12 years three terms mm -hmm. on the council um when you look back and you're sitting and you're enjoying that bourbon on your beautiful porch out there in red Oella. wine, red <laughs> wine, your red wine out there in oella looking at that beautiful sunset that you post from time mm -hmm. to time um what will you really feel good about that, that you did in 12 years? Well, I think, honestly, Don, and this is no secret, Don and I, we're, we're basically tag team in Cajunsville for the last 12 years. Uh, I think the, the schools, all the money we got for schools right up front when capital was easy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Southwest Baltimore County benefited a lot. And I give you a lot of credit for that, Don, Thank because you. You, you definitely made sure the county exec and the superintendent heard that message. And thank goodness, the late Kevin Cabinets bought right into it. And then the superintendent at the time, fortunately. Uh, so this, this area got a lot of the capital when capital was uh, much easier. See, you're saying that, and I just have been over in Dundalk and saw a high school open up a couple and years you saw ago. Colgate. Colgate yeah. Elementary yeah. just opened a few weeks ago. So when you say you fought for Catonsville, I'm over on the east side, and I see plenty happening right. over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, oh, no, it's, it's, been, been good. It's, it's, it's been good. It's been vibrant. We've been, been very fortunate. We've had great yeah. council members focus on that as as Tom said, going back to all the way back to Dutch, who who was really trying to address roofs and and repairs, and up through Jim Smith and Kevin Kamenitz, and I was proud to play a, a small part in that. I think it's been you, you've created qu quite a legacy. So uh, you've you've you, you got kids; they're getting a little older now, but there are quirk holiday memories. What That's what, so what gives you a warm fuzzy feeling when you think of the holidays? Yeah, yeah I was talking to Don and. Preparation for this. Uh, WBAL. I don't green room, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, my daughter, it was my second year in council, and WBAL happened to be there, and Santa Claus was there, and uh, Sophie was talking to Santa, and they got on the radio. This is cute. You know, little things kids say. She was six years old at the time. She's talking about reading a book, Duck for President. Yeah, you, you know, go. and uh, she's talking how uh, Norwegians stay up and they meet Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. 
And the Santa that was Santa Claus didn't realize that she really was doing that. So he was he was saying to Sophie, "No, no, you don't see Santa." And Sophie's like, "No, no, we yes, do. Yes, we do. <laughs> and, I'm Norwegian. Yes, and we so, do." So there was a little debate ensued, but eventually Santa figured it out. But it was fun. It was all called on WBL and six years old now. She's sixteen, sophomore at Caseville High School. Still believes. Still, oh. <laughs> always believe. Always Wait, believes. Hey man, go. I'm 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 70 years old and I believe. You there know, you go. so you you gotta believe. Tom, we're in the Beaumont, <laughs> one of the great new additions. I mean, go back 12 years ago when you were like, none of this was here. Yeah. Talk about Catonsville and what's happened A down huge, this main huge street. revitalization. I mean, this is definitely something that everybody in the county points to. What are you guys doing in Catonsville and how can we recreate it? I'll tell you the success of Cadenceville, in my opinion, is there are a lot of people that live in this town that invest their own money in this town, and and that's what makes this town special because uh, the the all, most of these businesses people shop here they, and they people, live here. People yeah. live well, here, shop here, invest here. Lives Right yep. here in Kings. Yep. I mean, these business owners. But I think Ned Atwater has 10,000 yeah. people I mean, to live within two miles of here that come and buy his muffin. Correct. That's right. Literally, correct. Yep. It will pick his muffin over the Walmart yep. muffin correct. or whatever that would be, right? Yeah, this, this town definitely supports uh, shopping local. And uh, we got just wonderful people and wonderful investors in the town and wonderful consumers. And uh, you can't recreate that. This is the real deal. And people see it. And uh, fortunately, we got a lot of young people moving into town. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Almost got the Aparicios. He <laughs> there, tried. There you go. He tried to get us <laughs> there you go. Where do people, they listen today and they said, you know, that guy, Quirk, he sounds like he knows what he's talking about with this money stuff. People out there who maybe have been thinking about a financial planner, where do they track you down? How do they find you? Um, well, uh, they can just Google uh, Retirement and Investment Group. Um, and we have a staff of uh, five people that work with me, uh, one MBA, one CFA, uh, we have account minimums only because we can only work with a certain amount of people just through time capacity. But, um, yeah, love the business. Love the business. Love what I do. County Council has been an honor and uh, privilege to serve in the County Council. Uh, my, my main business that pays the bills is really my investment company. I've been very lucky. I stay humble. It's a very humbling job, but uh, been. What are you doing all this extra time now? You know, you're not. You know, you've been doing two gigs. You get all this time back. What do you do with it? I, I could spend all that time on my investment company, but I'm looking forward to spending more time with my family. Looking more spend spend more time having a quality of life because I'm I, honestly for the last I don't know 20 years all I've done is work, 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 work. And, and you and know, so Tom, we, we 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 talked. Nestor talked about it. Geez, one or two guests ago probably with Pastor Jacobson, who was in here from Cain's United Methodist, that we really do, when I think of all of you who serve, there has developed, and probably fueled by social media, a coarseness mm -hmm. in the discussion, a nastiness yeah. that makes serving not nearly as yeah. much fun as it once was. Well, not, right? not yeah. even that. I mean, I'm you know, reading about people having threats made yeah. upon yeah. them it's not in, fun. in, in no. whatever way, not just that. I mean, you, you have a pretty significant job. I'm talking about people that are electoral counters, you mm -hmm. know, people that were previously health, health commissioners, pe people that were previously... Not your name's been on lawns here forever. Yeah. But, oh yeah, but but people in government and serving people. This has been a very very strange time. It's, it's been. I mean, partisan. The partisan divide is really tough, and people are really angry. And I think, unfortunately, social media makes it so much worse. Right. And uh, people pile on, but it's gotten kind of a little dangerous. If you go to my office, whether it's my council office, whether it's my home, or whether it's my investment office, you'll see security cameras everywhere. Because, unfortunately, after a very divisive primary. Uh, my car, my um, Heather's car, Heather's mom's car, all got screws in their tires right. the, on primary night election. And then um, through CZMP made a decision, and then all of a sudden I got more screws in my tires, and I have a Tesla, so tires of $500 mm -hmm. a tire. Um, but I had it happen three different times. And so that's all because I'm serving elected office. There's some crazy people out there, and I think social media really jacks them up and amplifies them. And I think that's uh, unfortunate. So it is a, a tougher time. I mean, you try to do right. And I'll tell you the thing that kind of gets me through the, the, the crazy extreme element out there is that I do believe that the vast majority of people are fair and reasonable. Um, the problem is you don't hear from no the doubt vast about majority, it. No but doubt about it. you hear from the crazies and the extremes. But I know out there the, the vast majority of people are fair and reasonable. Yep. And we've seen it. I mean, my first election, general election, 55%. My second one, 62 my third one, 68. And so each election I um, picked up in the general election. So we know there's a lot of people that value what we do. We see it in the election results. 
and and quite frankly, you see it when you go shopping. You hear it when you go shopping. Right, right. And but you know, it, it is a tougher time, and and hopefully um, things moderate and people find common ground again. It's going to take a while, though. We got divisive. Um, uh, device well, we have lies that have been told. Let's just call it what it is. We, we, I'm a journalist. We, <laughs> yeah, we just have lies that have been told. Yeah, and, and they're spun out because of social media, and um, it, it makes it more tough. And it, it makes the job a little less pleasant because that's who you hear from. You hear from the extremes. You hear from the angry people, and, and they just want to yell at somebody. And so that is a little – and the thing about my investment job – is I can choose my clients. And so right. I have 350 um, households, and they're all friends of mine. And if I get somebody that's, say, not the right fit or maybe just not the right person, I just don't take them. I right. refer them to somebody you else. You have somebody else take them. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. My, my business is wonderful because right. I'm dealing with all my friends. Right. And uh, politics, you know, you can't do that. You have to deal with everyone. And some people don't want to be dealt with. And so we're so. pushing peace on earth, goodwill to men. <laughs> Councilman. Happy holidays. Thanks for, thanks for your service. Yeah. Thank yeah, you so appreciate much. Appreciate it. Tom, appreciate yep. you. The, the yep. Good councilman's here. We're in the 21228. Uh, it's all brought to you by the Maryland Lottery. We're letting ourselves play here at the Beaumont. We're going to be getting some steaks, some chops, crab cake. Don Moeller is here. We have more guests coming. I have surprise guests coming. And we're going to be at Costas next week with more surprise guests. And people are telling me they're coming. Apparently, John Martin from the Lottery, Bill Cole from Cole Roofing, amongst many other luminaries and dignitaries as I celebrate 30 years. We're going to continue on here at the Beaumont. I'm Nestor. He's Don. We are WNST AM 1570. Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking Baltimore positive. Take care.